Even though there are so many of us in it, the equestrian world can feel like a lonely place, especially when you are managing everything in your own world and all that that entails. And you feel like no one is looking out for you as you continuously give everyone your all. There is a depth and a breadth to our lives that largely goes unexplored. As an equestrian life mindset coach and host of this podcast, I am here to lead you on that exploration. Deep conversations covering topics in and out of the show ring with industry leaders and unsung heroes alike sharing their stories and what makes their journey unique but relatable at the same time. We all have stories to share and lessons to trade, something we've learned from a horse or from each other. So relax and be ready to listen with more than just your ears. I'm Tracy Mitchell. Welcome to Hitting Your Stride. Hello, everyone. The episode today is just you and me. I have been having a couple of topics circulating around me for the last while, either in conversation with others or just my own musings as I spend hours in the car driving around to clients, which I do a lot. (laughs) Since these topics seem to be on the forefront of a lot of people's minds and are actually related, I thought I would discuss them today. If you find you are dealing with a similar situation of what I'm about to talk about, I hope this episode gives you some tools and inspiration to work through it. Cheers, everyone. The majority of the horse people I have crossed paths with in my life and career, those I have known for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, are all wonderful people who all have great character, and to top it all off, they look after their horses really well. I see firsthand how well these horse women and men look after their horses because I am there as a part of their horse's healthcare team. These horses I have tended to, in some cases for the span of my 23 year REMT career, routinely receive on average monthly massages along with chiropractor and acupuncture appointments. On top of that, their owners go out of their way to make sure these horses have the best feed and hay possible in order to meet their athletic requirements, as well as additional supplements. This also includes regular veterinarian visits, as well as the unexpected calls. These dedicated horsewomen and men go out of their way on a daily basis to make sure their horses are groomed, exercised, bathed, and groomed some more. These horses often have a wardrobe that would put many people's closets to shame. This includes two or three different types of sheets or blankets for every season, multiple sets of polo bandages and boots that in most cases are color coordinated to the numerous saddle pads that fill their lockers, trunks of their cars, or that sit in their basements at home with the rest of their horses apparel. Now, by no means am I making judgments here because I too have been one of those devoted horse moms. I had more polos than I could count and yes, they matched my horse's saddle pads and quite frequently a quick trip to the tax store meant I was walking out of there with more stuff that my horse and I didn't really need. I definitely had my horses well looked after on all fronts but it wasn't until I had been working for a while that I noticed and took notice of how important my own self-care was. In my 23rd year of practice, it is imperative that I look after myself, and that adds up to me committing to two massages a month, monthly osteopathy appointments, and two dates every week with my personal trainer, Patrick. This schedule is something that I knew I had to commit to, both in terms of my finances and managing my time. I no longer bounce the appointments I have booked for myself or try to open up my self-care schedule at the request of others. Now, trust me, this was extremely hard for me to learn to do. It's in my nature to put others first, as it is in most people who have a love and a connection with horses or any animal for that matter. My overall health, physical, mental, emotional, and especially my sense of self is in a much better place since I have made myself a priority. Learning to invest in myself has been a big part of my personal development journey. I knew that in order for me 
to have a long, productive, and enjoyable career massaging horses without experiencing excessive or premature burnout, I had to make this investment. I also made another investment in myself when I ventured into the education process of becoming a life coach. Not only was this a big financial commitment, but it has been a huge time commitment. I had to further learn how to make an already busy schedule and fine tune that baby to make sure I was able to take part in everything I wanted to take part in, to make sure I was in the best possible position to start my life coaching business, Equestrian Elements Life Coaching. This process wasn't easy as the learning curve to adjust my behaviors and mindset around making more time for me was a challenge. For the most part, I have it figured out, but it is something I continuously have to work on. When was the last time you invested in yourself? You knew that question was coming, didn't you? <laughs> Why is it that equestrians will put themselves on the bottom of the health and wellness list more often than not? I asked this question based on what I have witnessed over my lifetime in horses. I have literally seen riders and trainers unable to walk due to a bad back or painfully tight hamstrings as they get their next horse ready to ride. I overhear riders joking amongst themselves about how sore they are, or how they came off their horse the other day, but they will be just fine, I hear them say. I often have heard not just about the physical aspects of self-care being denied, but also the mental emotional aspects or pressures that riders may be experiencing. These may include dealing with anxiety while riding, the expectation of a show season or handling current barn politics. Let's not forget the fact that even though we are avid horse enthusiasts, and they do take up a large portion of our attention and time, we do have lives outside of the barn. We have other responsibilities such as work, school, and everyday tasks. If you are a trainer, barn manager, or barn owner, you are in your workplace all day long. That in itself is a challenging scenario. We have relationships outside of horses, family, kids, friends, and these people can also be felt as an added pressure as we try to foster, grow, and maintain them on a daily basis. We need those connections. Everything we have to do in a day adds up so quickly, sometimes to the point where in just a matter of hours, we go from having some time to ourselves to suddenly being swamped with things to do. And it can leave us feeling overwhelmed, tired, and drained, both mentally and physically. Think of how much more fun you could have with your horse if you looked after your health and wellness better if you made yourself a priority. Think about how all aspects of your life would feel if you put you and what you need at the top of the to-do list. Is it time to invest in yourself? Investing in yourself needs to be a well thought out journey. And here are two tips to get you started thinking about it. First, List the top three things in your life that you think you are doing to promote your own self-care. Now, for some, answering this question is a bit of a reality check, and hearing this question might make you feel uncomfortable or uneasy. The hardest thing to do sometimes is getting real with ourselves. Next thing, ask yourself, how much of a struggle is it to do those three things? Are you able to have consistency with each? As you ponder these questions, I am sure some of you are feeling what I know I felt, feeling overwhelmed almost instantly. And honestly, for me, there was a feeling of sadness, like I had been letting myself down and that I knew I had to do better for me. How do you know when you're burned out? It's the feeling of being overwhelmed and your body is screaming that it's tired. Or when you are working crazy hard, but not feeling like you're seeing positive results. More symptoms of it include wanting to throw in the towel and just quit. Or when you suffer from irritability, lapses of concentration and decreased productivity. The physical man's manifestation of this can be headaches, loss of appetite and or sleep. As entrepreneurs and horse lovers, 
We know we chose to be in this situation because we love what we do. But it is a bit of an eye opener knowing that it is possible to burn out doing what you love. Even as I say that and think back to when I have experienced all of those signs and symptoms I mentioned during the development and the running of three businesses, knowing that I was approaching burnout, if not already knee deep in it, there was still a part of me that felt weak and like a failure because I wasn't able to keep up to not only the demands around me, but the demands and expectations I had put on myself. So if any of you are feeling any of this, you are not alone. Whenever I have been in a situation where I realize big changes need to be made in my life and surroundings, I sit down and reevaluate my priorities. I perform an audit on my life. I look honestly at everything and everyone in it and what changes can be made so that I can get my life back in a place where I'm feeling more in control of my days and where my emotional space feels lighter. This is not an easy task, and I sympathize with every one of you out there who are nodding your heads right now, knowing you too need to reassess your priorities. We find so much value in what we do on a day-to-day basis that it becomes tricky when trying to find that balance and sense of peace we all crave. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I knew I had to make the time to invest in me, my self-care. I know it is easier said than done to make time for yourself outside of and away from the equestrian world, but it is possible. We often choose not to take a real look at our lives and the situations we have gotten ourselves into and just keep going along with the norm because it's easier and because the initial reaction we know we are going to have when we peel back the layers of the reality we've made for ourselves. As with most things in life, taking an honest look with open eyes at what is going on around us is the first steps you have to take here to truly be aware of what's actually going on. This is the first step. Things are never as scary as they seem once light has been shed upon the issues at hand. Change is possible, my friends. So let's look at some ways in which we can help manage those feelings of burnout and start making some investment into ourselves. The first one is only do the essentials. Now look, I get it. When you're feeling burned out and too tired to think clearly, sometimes everything feels like it's essential. I've been there. But if we stand back, see the picture with more intentional eyes, we can start to see where changes can be made. Postpone or cancel the non-urgent. Leave the emails and the texts. Not every single one of them is urgent, and they can wait a day, maybe even two. Delegate what responsibilities do not need to be done by you. To counter the sense of overwhelm, you need to shift some responsibilities off of your shoulders. Secondly, tell someone. Talk to someone. Even though there are so many of us in it, the equestrian world can feel like a lonely place, especially when you are managing everything in your own world and all that that entails. And you feel like no one is looking out for you as you continuously give everyone your all. I know so many people doing this. Talking to someone who understands where you're at is the first step to discovering solutions to finding way, your way out of burnout. Find yourself a mentor or a coach like myself to help you sort through all those thoughts and confusion and help you find some tools to make your day-to-day and life more manageable. I have said this so many times. Those of us who find our way by making a living in the equine industry are all in the same boat. And by removing the mask of having it all together, there is an opportunity here for professionals to come together with the intention to learn from each other by listening and in return, finding the chance to offer advice to those who are in search of it. The moment you open up and realize you are not alone is the moment things get a lot clearer. Thirdly, organize something to look forward to. Our calendars are often filled with things that we should be doing or even things that look like quote unquote fun, but we aren't super excited about it. When was the last time you did something for yourself that wasn't horsey? (laughs) 
What would you do for yourself if you had the chance? How about planning a day trip somewhere that doesn't have the end goal of coming home with a ribbon or two? <laughs> As the world is opening up, book that tea or coffee chat with one of your best friends who you would love to see more often. If this person is also horsey, that is fine. Just make sure neither of you are wearing breeches and go enjoy some time away from the barn. If you are anything like me, the way I recharge is a day of going nowhere. I spend so many hours day after day in my car driving around to massage clients that for me to recharge, I need to do the exact opposite of that. So if lying around all day and enjoying your favorite shows you have recorded is what you need to feel more energized, then do it. If you need someone to give you permission to do so, then I give you that permission. I have been in this exact situation. I needed to hear from someone who understood exactly where I was at and that it was perfectly all right for me to have a day to myself, for myself however I wanted to spend it. So I did it and it was awesome. <laughs> All right, the next thing you can do is get outside. And when I say get outside, I mean somewhere away from the barn. I know you are outside all day in the elements and this time of year is horrible, but this is a different kind of intention we have here. This is nothing, this, there is nothing more soothing than finding a place in nature where you can sit or walk and enjoy the peaceful surroundings. For me, it's the water. I love to sit by the water. I find myself closing my eyes and just listening to my surroundings and taking big, deep breaths, fully filling my lungs, and then fully releasing that breath and all the stress I was carrying with it. For you, it might be a wooded area or a local park. If you are a winter enthusiast, this time of year is perfect for some snowy hikes, quietly observing nature along the way. No matter what you choose to do, being in nature can have a wonderful grounding effect on you. And at the end of your time outside, you, can, you can't help but feel more relaxed. Next, reduce the additional emotional stress. How many of us friends have been in a situation we are, where we are already so much have on our plate and that one more thing gets added and it's like, what is that old saying? When it rains, it pours. Chances are that when you are feeling the most fragile is when the world decides to pile it on. A friend or family member says something to hurt your feelings or if your furnace at home breaks, the water pump at the barn gives up the ghost and so on and so on. This one might be a bit more challenging to enforce, and we can never predict those things that come out of nowhere, but we can learn to manage how we respond to some of the things that can cause us undue emotional stress. An example might be learning how to not get involved in your friend's latest relationship drama, or when you hear the latest gossip around the barn, you can choose to not engage or even listen. Or how about not letting that client push your buttons anymore? Find a way to remove yourself from these situations, but choosing a different route. You know at the end of the day, you will feel much better about your day and where you are at if you aren't carrying around other people's heaviness around with you. Do what you need to do for you. Leave the email unread. Ignore the calls. You're human. You can't be there for everyone all of the time. This is what we call instilling boundaries into your day. And for some of us, into the evening hours as well. Saying no can be one of the hardest things to do. We have chosen to be in an industry of service. And in most cases, we are happy to serve. There does come a time where we are allowed to step back to make sure that we don't give away so much of ourselves that there is nothing left at the end of each day for ourselves. My final point here is one that took me a bit to fully grasp and understand, especially when I was in those moments of feeling fully overloaded and like there was no extra time in the day for me to accomplish anything more than I was already doing. So here we go. In order to have more time in the day to yourself, you must be more organized. Now, what I initially found laughable about this <laughs> suggestion is that I thought, I was already organized to a T, 
I am a planner. I live my day to day with my date book and my to do list attached to me. How could I be any more organized? I know so many people in this situation again. The reality was, however, that when I dug deeper and performed the audit and got real with just how exactly I was using my time, I did realize that there were massive groupings of time that I wasn't actually using to the best of my advantage. Once I got things sorted out and could really see how I was or was not using my time, it allowed me to approach my days with a whole different outlook and level of not only productivity, but the chance to find more time for me. Lastly, let's see every challenge as an opportunity to grow. Now that you are able to put a name on how and what you are feeling, things will get easier from here. Here is where the growth mindset comes into play. Every time you find yourself on the other side of a challenge you have completed or conquered, however you want to call it, you know that you have taken another step forward in your own path of personal development. With every challenge comes along with it something we can learn about the situation and more importantly about ourselves. What we want in our lives, who we want in our lives, and what we want our lives to look at or look like, sorry. I'm not here to fool anybody into thinking that any of this is easy. Everything I have mentioned, experienced for myself and shared with you is what you come across on this thing we call a learning curve. And as with anything that is new that we are learning, it's never easy right off the top. It takes practice and self-awareness of your habits and being honest about exactly what you do with your time on a daily basis. Take that audit idea and perform it on just one day for yourself, I'm sure you will be able to find more time for you. Burnout is common, but it shouldn't be a destination you wish to visit on a regular basis. Working in the equine industry, no matter what your job or position, is one that definitely has some busy seasons. The spring and summer is its peak. Is it not reasonable then to look at what time remains in this off season around us and put into practice some of the self-care, self-investments I have suggested? It only took me about 15 years of massaging to finally recognize that I need to take some downtime in the fall and winter. Try, try doing this. Try marking a day on the calendar where you promise to yourself that that day is yours. Give everyone around you plenty of notice, plan for childcare well in advance. If we approach this with baby steps, how about just plan for one day a week where you are home two hours earlier than you normally are? All it takes is something small to start allowing you to feel like you are taking control of you and giving back to yourself. Remember a bit ago when I mentioned how a lot of what I am talking about in this episode takes practice and to become a part of your day and life, these suggestions need to be put into practice and learned? Well, in my travels and in talking with my clients, both those I coach and those I massage for, the general tone in all conversations is that everyone is tired. I have concluded that we don't truly know how to rest. Let me tell you, rest takes work, (laughs) especially if your tendency is to be working all the time. I used to tell myself I wasn't capable of rest, but the truth was I had to learn how to rest and figure out who I was outside of my work and my output. For me, resting takes conscious effort, but it's worth it. I have to remind myself to slow down to do things for the sake of play and recreation, and to sign out and sign off from the rest of the world and not feel guilty for doing so. You are not alone in this journey. It is so important to recognize that taking on less, allowing yourself time to rest and unplug, and setting yourself up with systems that allow you to step away from the barn or your business once in a while is not being lazy. It is necessary. It is the healthiest, most efficient thing you can do for yourself, your business, and the important relationships in your life. Think back to all the things you do for your horse, the right food, the proper training, the right equipment to help it succeed. 
all of the, the extra complimentary health care that you do, all of it is important. You don't rethink those choices often. So you need to apply that kind of thinking when it comes to making an investment in yourself. Self-care is key to avoiding burnout, and you deserve to love what you do, both with and without your horse. So friends, I hope what I have shared here with you today encourage you, encourages you to make a solid investment in yourself. Take care, and until we chat again, keep hitting your stride. So there you have it. I have some great interviews lined up for future episodes, and we'll be covering some pretty interesting topics, as always, with the intent to open and engage the horse world on a wide variety of issues. So until next time, keep your eyes forward and continue to hit your stride. To stay current with Hitting Your Stride, subscribe on my website or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. If you like what you've heard here today, make sure you share and leave a comment to help guide future episodes and widen the audience. And be sure to check out social media to keep up to date with Equestrian Elements Life Coaching.